To God be the glory. I don't know if some of you have heard Secretary Irwin Tulfo, the Secretary of DSWD. Ang sabi po niya ay yun daw mga tatay, fathers who are delinquent and are not taking care of their children you have legal obligation and uh, some uh, congressmen are even proposing in congress that fathers who are not doing their responsibilities to their children must be penalized ah, hindi ko lang po alam kung imprisonment ang penalty kasi kung imprisonment, e eh, paano nila maasikaso yung pangangailangan ng kanilang mga anak pag nandun na sila sa loob ng bilangguan? Because I think uh, our legislators and those in the DSWD notice that there are children that are being abandoned by their fathers. If you're a father and you affixed your name and your signature on the birth certificate of the child, whether the child is legitimate or illegitimate, you are legally accountable and obligated to take care of the child until the child becomes an adult. At uh, narinig ko na merong mga legislators who are proposing legalization of divorce. Of course, ayaw natin dyan pero ang kanilang uh, reason is this. In countries that there is legalization of divorce, fathers are legally obligated to support their children. Dito sa Pilipinas, naghihiwala yung mga tatay at nanay. Wala nang nag-aasikaso doon sa mga bata. They're abandoned. And so, if you affix your name, and your signature on the birth certificate, then you are legally bound to take care of the child. But what if you are not the father of the child? Hindi mo siya anak. Hindi mo siya kadugo. But you choose to put your name and your signature on the birth certificate of the child. You are no, you're not obligated to do that. But if ever you choose na aangkinin mo yung bata na sayo, you put your name and your signature on the birth certificate of this child, then to me that is an act of grace. Kasi hindi mo man siya anak, bakit mo siya aakuin? Bakit mo aaminin na siya ay iyong anak? You put your name and your signature on the birth certificate. That, that child will become your heir. Whether legitimate or illegitimate, they become your heir. So it is an act of grace. Pero siguro kung maganda yung bata, walang problema. But what if the child has defects? What if the child is ugly? Do you think a father would be willing to affix his name and signature on the birth certificate of the child? Eh, ang pangit-pangit. May defect pa? Okay lang sana kung kasing ganda siya ni Senator Grace Po. Remember, Senator Grace Po was found on the stairs of a church in Iloilo, abandoned. And, uh, mga actors and actresses yung nag-ampon sa kanya. Okay yun kasi maganda. What if the child is not that good looking? Do you think a father would be willing to put his name on the birth certificate and allow this child to have a part of his inheritance? Humanly speaking, that would not be possible. But if you think about it, That's what God did for us. Because we used to be outside of God's family. We were ugly. We were filthy. But then God allowed us to be part of His family. In fact, in the New Testament, particularly in the writings of Apostle Paul, he said, 
we were like branches of a wild olive plant. Wild. But we were grafted into the body of Jesus, the olive branch. We become the olive branch of Jesus Christ. We used to be outsiders. God placed His name in us. That's why we can call Him our Father, Jesus Christ, our brother. Because of God's grace. And if you read through the New Testament, the, one of the major themes is that we used to be outsiders of the community of God's people, and now we are fellow citizens. God has placed His name in us. Perhaps some of you would ask the question, Pastor, that's in the New Testament. Meron ba sa Old Testament? Do we have a precedence in the Old Testament wherein God decided to put His name on someone who is not even worthy? Because some people think that the God in the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. Kasi sabi nila, yung God sa Old Testament parang nakakatakot. Uh, it's the law that is being emphasized. In the New Testament, it is love. It is grace. But even in the Old Testament, we see a precedence to this idea na isang outsider, isang tao na hindi karapat dapat is being given by a name from God. And this person that we'll be talking about tonight is Jacob. For those of you who grew up in Sunday school and you have been very faithful in VBS classes, Jacob is a familiar person to you. But for the sake of those who are new, at hindi masyadong malalim yung kanilang background sa Bible, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham. Abraham is very popular. Not only among Christians, among Jews, but even among Muslims. In fact, just lately, they celebrated the feast of the sacrifice. Uh, that was the time that Abraham sacrificed his son, na hindi na natin i-discuss o i-argue kung sinong son because in our Bible, it was Isaac. But to them, it was Ismael. But since hindi naman natuloy yung sacrifice, wag na natin pag-awayan kung sino yung son. But Abraham is very popular among Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Abraham had a son by the name of Isaac. And Isaac had two sons. In fact, they were twins. Yung unang lumabas, ang kanyang pangalan si Esau. O, sabi ni Saya, si Esau. E, the second son is Jacob. But these twins were different from each other. Esau was a macho man. He was always out. He was a hunter. And he would bring food to his father. Kaya paborito siya ni Isaac. Jacob was always in the home. Kasama ng kanyang nanay na si Rebecca. And so Rebecca loved Jacob. Esau had all the physical features. He had all the advantages. He was the firstborn. And so he had the birthright. Now, the birthright is not a physical or material thing. It was a spiritual blessing. But Esau did not give value to spiritual things. Wala siyang pakialam. But Jacob wanted spiritual things so much that he was willing to do anything just to get it. One day, while Esau was out hunting, wala siyang nakuha, he came home empty, gutom, pagod. Nakita niya si Jacob was cooking stew, naglulugaw. And Esau said, Jacob, please give me some of what you are cooking because I'm dying. 
And Jacob said, No, I will not give it to you. Sige na, mamamatay ako pag hindi mo ako bigyan. Okay, bigyan kita on one condition. That you give your birthright to me. Now Esau did not appreciate the birthright because it was not something material. It's not something you can sell. It's not something you can make money. It was a spiritual blessing. Kaya palagi kong sinasabi dito sa mundo, Marami mga tao nag-aaway sa material na bagay. Kahit magkakapatid, nagbabarilan, nagsusuntukan, nagsasaksakan sa mga material na bagay. Wala pa akong narinig na mga tao na nagsuntukan, nagbarilan at nagsasaksakan dahil nag-aagawan sila sa langit. Ito bagon po ka, pastor. Di man mabaligya ng langit. Dili man maprinda. Yuta, mabaligya man. So people would fight for material things. Esau did not have the heart for spiritual things. When Jacob said, I'll give you if you give your birthright to me. Can you imagine exchanging your birthright with a bowl of stew? Ganun yung kanyang paningin sa spiritual blessings. So binigay niya kay Jacob, wala naman silang pinirmahan, sinabi lang niya, sige, sayo na. So Jacob gave him what he was cooking. And Esau was a person who was so confident. Sabi niya, okay lang, mawala yung birthright anyway. Pagdating ng panahon na ang aming tatay ay maging matanda na, he will call on us. And he will lay his hands on us and he will give us his blessings. And hindi niya alam na pinagpaplanuhan na rin pala yun ni Jacob. Jacob was not contented of receiving a spiritual blessing, a birthright. He wanted that bago mamatay yung kanyang tatay, siya rin ang makatanggap ng spiritual blessing. He was not really interested about the inheritance or the property. He was very much interested with a spiritual blessing. And so one day, matanda na si Isaac, hindi na siya makakita, tinawag niya si Iso at narinig ni Jacob. Iso, matanda na ako, I want to give my blessing to you before I die. Pwede bang bigyan mo ako ng paborito ko by favorite food? You go and hunt. So while Esau was out hunting, Jacob told his mother, Ma, magbibigay na ng blessing si Papa dahil malapit na daw siyang mamatay. Anong gagawin natin? Ah, oh, madali lang yan, anak. Kumuha ka doon ng isang animal, katayin mo. Magluto tayo ng masarap para sa tatay mo. Ma, pero makilala ako ng Papa. Dahil I'm not hairy as my brother. Ah, madali lang yan. Kunin mo yung skin ng animal, ilagay mo doon sa dibdib mo at sa ba- braso mo para pag ginawa ka ng tatay mo, makikita niya, ma- malalaman niya na ikaw si Iso. So, they deceived Isaac. Now, the meaning of the word Jacob, the, name of, the meaning of the name Jacob is a deceiver a supplanter, a person who manipulates things for his own advantage. So, yun na nga, nagluto sila at dinala na ni Jacob, pa, nandito na yung order niyo po. Parang ang boses ay hindi man kay Iso, parang kay Jacob man. Halika nga, halika nga, anak. Hawakan nga kita. Oh, nung hinawakan siya, yung nahawakan yun mang skin ng animal, hairy. Ah, si Iso. Thank you, anak. And Isaac ate of the food that Jacob brought to him, thinking that it was Esau who brought the food. And then he blessed Jacob. When Esau knew about it, when he knew that his younger brother and his mother conspired to deceive their father, he was furious. Galit na galit si Iso. And he wanted to kill his own brother. Kaya nung narinig ni Rebecca, yung nanay, 
talagang paborito na si Jacob. Sabi ni Jacob, umalis ka na. Lumayas ka na. Because your brother is going to kill you. And so that very moment, Jacob left and he went to his uncle in Haran, Laban. Itong si Laban, nandun siya sa Haran and he had animals with him and he had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. Pagdating ni Jacob doon, sabi niya, Uncle, dito mo na ako because my brother would want to kill me. I'll just have, I want to have shelter here with you. So, natuwa din si Leban dahil meron siyang utusan. Sabi niya, o oh, sige Jacob, dito ka lang. You stay with me. But while Jacob was there with his uncle, Laban, he fell in love with Rachel. And so sabi niya sa kay uncle niya, Uncle, gusto kong mapangasawa si Rachel. Oh, okay. So, the deceitful mind of Laban started working. Sabi niya, sige, if you want Rachel, you can work for me for seven years. And after seven years, ibibigay ko siya sa'yo. Tuwang-tuwa naman si Jacob, yung seven years, parang seven days lang. Mabilis. And then on the seventh year, sabi ni Jacob, uh, Uncle, yung usapan natin. So there was a wedding. Ang problema lang, nung wedding, nilagyan ng veil yung babae. Hindi pala si Rachel ang binigay sa kanya. Si Leah. Eh wala naman siyang gusto doon kay Leah. Ang gusto niya si Rachel. Pero wala siyang magawa. Kasal na. Hindi na pwedeng bawin. And Jacob was deceived. The moment you are a deceitful person, one of these days, aanihin mo talaga yung ipinunla mo. So he was deceived. And so he said, Paano ito, uncle? Ayaw ko kay Leah. No, don't do that. She is married to you already. But I want Rachel. Oh, okay, you want Rachel? You work for another seven years for me. Ah, uh, 14 years ang total. You know, when Jacob deceived his brother and his father, he did not realize that the consequence will be another 14 years of being deceived by his uncle and father-in-law. So when he was there, he had two wives, hindi naman niya sinadya na magkaroon siya ng dalawang misis. It was the deceitful ways of his father-in-law and uncle. And they had children. And sabi niya sa kanyang father-in-law, Tay, how can I support my children? I've been working for you. Pagkain lang, bigay mo sa akin. Paano naman yung mga anak ko, yung pamilya ko? Dalawa pa naman yung pamilya niya. Ah, madali lang yan, anak. You continue taking care of my animals. Lahat ng mga anak, yung mga galing sa kanila, pag lumabas yun na plain, walang spot sa iyo. All the spotted ones, akin. Isa yun ang agreement nila. Ngayon, ang maraming lumabas plain, di maraming part yung kay Jacob, sabi ni Laban. Parang alkansi mong kuani. Uh, Jacob, sandali lang. Baguhin naman natin. Uh, mula ngayon, lahat ng plain, akin. Lahat ng spotted sa'yo. Okay, okay. Pero ang nangyari, mas maraming spotted ang lumabas. Eh, lalong yumaman si Jacob. Sabi ni Laban, Alkan sige ko, Anida. Uh, Jacob, halika. Uh, baguhin na naman natin ulit. So, Jacob was deceived several times by his father-in-law. And he said, ah, hindi ko na kaya. Aalis na ako, dalhin ko na ang aking mga pamilya, all my possessions, and I will go back. But he had a problem. If he would go back to his home, his brother was waiting for him. And that brother was angry. Pero sabi niya, hindi ko na talaga kaya itong aking father-in-law. Kinsa ba sa inyo ang di na makaagwanta sa inyong ugangan? Niya mulayas na lang yun mo. Genesis 32, 22-32. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabuk 
After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered, then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans, and you have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. While Jacob was there, he was afraid that his brother will attack him in the middle of the night, a man came and wrestled with him. He divided his family, one on this side, another on that side, all his possession at the center. Sa isip ni Jacob, if my brother will attack this, ito will be spared. If he will attack that, then ito will be spared. But while he was alone, a man wrestled with him. And Jacob sensed something different with this man. And so he held on to him. And he said, Hindi kita bibitawan unless you bless me. Nagkalisud-lisud na yun si Jacob. Wak pag yun laing naasay ang una-una. Spiritual blessing. I don't know of any person whose mind is preoccupied with spiritual blessing. I will not let you go unless you bless me. And God asked the question, and we are in a series, mula pa nung last month, when God asked a question. And the question of God, what is your name? Ang ibig bang sabihin, hindi kilala ng Diyos si Jacob? Ang ibig bang sabihin, God did not know his name? Of course, God knew him. But God asked him a question to give him the opportunity to be changed. Because the answer of that question is not good. The answer to that question, I am a deceiver. I am Jacob. I am a manipulator. Tikasan ko ang akong kinaiya maot. That was the answer to the question. And it was the answer to that question that was the beginning in the chains of the life of Jacob. You cannot be changed unless you admit who you are. Never. Remember the story of Jesus Christ? That one day there were two people who went to the temple. One was a Pharisee. The other, tax collector. The Pharisee, Say, Lord, salamat at mabait akong tao. I have obeyed all your commandments. I have done good things. Unlike this tax collector. Tikasan man na siya gino. The tax collector heard what this self-righteous person was talking about. And in silence, he pounded his breast. And said, I am a sinner. I need God's mercy. Who do you think left the temple blessed? It was the person who admitted who he was. When God asked the question, 
what is your name? It was an opportunity for Jacob to accept how rotten he was, how filthy he was. And God said, from now on, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name is Israel. El is the name of God placed in Jacob. Elohim, El Elyon, El Shaddai. The name of God is now given to Jacob. Jacob was never the same again after that encounter because God changed him. He answered the question correctly. What would be our response to God when he asked the question? Several years ago, I think four or five years ago, I was invited to a retirement party, kayong mga teachers. 60 ba ang retirement or 65? Anyway, I was uh, invited in Pagadian. Um, a friend invited me. And during the party, yung anak nila na babae, when I was in Pagadian, she was, I think, in high school. But then, uh, years later, she became a medical doctor and a specialist in skin. Lumapit siya sa akin. Sabi niya, Pastor, matagal na tayong hindi nakita. Uh, sabi ko, matagal na. Sabi niya, I'm now a medical doctor and I specialize on skin. Nakita niya may mole ako noon. Sabi niya, Pastor, do you want me to remove those moles from your face? I have only two answers. Either I say yes or no. If I trust her, I will say yes. If I don't trust her, nganong iintrigo man ako ang akong naong aning bataa, maot na nidaan ako ngaong. Basig mamaot pa ning samot. But I said yes. Yeah, I knew her when she was young, but now she's an expert. Gitang-tang uh, niya ang mole sa akong now. You know, when God asked the question, do you want to be changed? There are only two answers. Either it is yes or no. Do you want me to put my name in you? You can either say yes or no. Jacob was changed because he answered the question correctly. I am a deceiver. I am a manipulator. And God said, I will change that. From now on, you are Israel. God took someone, an outsider, someone who is not worthy of God's blessing, and gave him the best. We also are bringing the name of Jesus with us. Everywhere we go, the moment we have accepted Him into our lives, we have the name of Jesus in us. There's an old hymn. I don't know if some of you can still remember. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. We used to be child of the devil, but now we are given the name of God and we are taking the name of Jesus with us. The question is, do we honor Him? Do we serve Him? Are we worthy of the name that He has given to us? Several years ago, I used this illustration, and perhaps some of you could still remember, but for the sake of those who are new, and even for those who are with us online, I would like to use this illustration again. In 1935, Japan invaded China. Millions of Chinese died in that invasion. In fact, if you watch the latest movie of Bruce Willis, I cannot imagine the horror and the agony that the Chinese people experienced during the 10 years of Japanese occupation. Tayo sa Pilipinas, four years lang tayo occupied by Japan. And yet, we hear our grandparents talking about the atrocities 
the hostilities of the Japanese. China was under Japan for 10 years. And there was one young couple. One night, pa-uwi sila from the market. They were passing a checkpoint. At yung mga sundalo doon sa checkpoint ay drunk, lasing. Tinawag yung couple. Ali kayo. And they were trembling. Mapit sila. And sabi ng mga Japanese soldiers, mga espia kayo, ano? No, sir, hindi po kami mga spies. And they were beaten. Both the husband and the wife were beaten. The husband died on the spot. The woman survived. She was pregnant at the time. She had a miscarriage. Although she survived, but those who took care of her told her, you will never have another child again because of the damage that you incurred. That woman had bitterness and hatred in her heart towards the Japanese. Every time mamakita niya yung mga Japanese, talagang kumukuloy ang kanyang dugo, but they could not do anything because the Japanese were very powerful at the time. But in 1945, Japan was defeated when two atomic bombs were dropped, one in Nagasaki, another in Hiroshima. They were forced to surrender. And it was General Douglas MacArthur who accepted the unconditional surrender of the Japanese. When Japan was defeated, they had to leave China because the Chinese were chasing them, were running after them, and many Japanese were killed Pag inabutan ka, talagang patay ka. And this Chinese lady saw these Japanese who were fleeing. They were trying to escape. Bit, 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 bit nila yung kanilang mga anak. And there was one family, yung isang anak, mga five years old, babae, naiwan. When they were running in a hurry, they left the child. And here comes thousands of Chinese pursuing them. This Chinese lady saw that if this child, pag inabutan ito, patay talaga siya. Nakalimutan niya yung kanyang bitterness and hatred for the Japanese. Napalitan ng pity on that little child. She ran, she grabbed this child, tinanggal niya yung damit dahil damit Japanese, pinalitan niya, and she went to another place where nobody knew her. She adopted the child. She even gave her a Chinese name, her family name. And that when the child was growing up, palagi niyang sinasabi, anak, hindi ka man Chinese. Although pariho ang itsura natin, pero hindi ka Chinese. You are a Japanese. You are the child of our enemy. And they caused tremendous suffering on us. I had bitterness and hatred for your people, but when I saw you there, I grabbed you and took you into myself. Nung lumaki na yung bata, she became 25 years old. Sabi niya, na totoo ba na Japanese ako? So ang ibig sabihin, yung aking mga magulang nasa Japan, would you allow me to visit them? And the Chinese woman said, okay, I'll, buy, I'll sell some of my property para magamit mo puntang Japan. So she went to Japan. 25 years old na she at that time. She was looking for her parents, but she could not find them because I think they also died during that time. When she was in Japan, she worked. She had a very good job and a well-paying job. Marami siyang pera. Then years later, she received a letter from the Chinese woman. Ang sabi doon, anak, I am sick and I am dying. When the Japanese lady read the letter, she cried. And she sold everything she had in Japan and went back to China and took care of that Chinese woman until she died. Because she realized that if that lady did not pick her up, she would have died a long time ago. She was an outsider. In fact, she was the child of an enemy. But this Chinese lady gave her a home, gave her a name. 
Jesus did more than that to us because he suffered the untold agony so that we who are filthy, we who are ugly in his sight will be given a home, will be given a life eternal because of what Jesus Christ has done. So take the name of Jesus with you everywhere you go. Honor him, serve him, love him. To God be the glory.